Welcome back to Vikings Connected. Aaron Newberg, my name is Chris Hockey, and I'm excited. Up next, Skull LOL. Yeah, Skull LOL allows some of your favorite players and coaches to tell some of their favorite stories from when they're on the team. This week, we've got a bunch of little ones for a great smorgasbord. Check it out. Training camp was great. <laughs> it was great. Here, you talk about Mankato. Now, now we're in our 30s. All of us are in our 30s. You know, Marshall, Page, Eller, uh, Grady Alderman, Mick Tinglehoff. You know, we, we've all been together a long time. We live in dormitories. <laughs> and the coaches are on the first level, the veterans on the second level, and the rookies on the third level. And we're back in college again, you know? We're making the rookies do this, the rookies do that, it's just hazing them and all the stuff. And then at 11 o'clock, after they've had, we had bed check. We're 35 years old, and here comes Jerry Burns. Okay, Mick, you and Fran in there? Bed check. Well, as soon as Burns, he would leave, a bunch of us would get together and go back downtown and have some beer. Just for the hell of it, right? And, and go to, it was just like being in boys camp again. And I love training camp. It was a, it was a hoot. Well, the the and he's loose call is actually something that originated uh, in my horse racing career. It, with, with this being my first play-by-play -play job at any level, the fact that I had called, you know, ten to fifteen thousand races before I started in the NFL, I, I knew how to build a crescendo. And they're racing. Da 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 da. They hit the wire. Photo finish. So when horses would take big leads at the top of the stretch, every so often I would say, and he's loose, like the horse got loose. So then when Adrian joined the mix and he had all of those runs where he ran away from everybody, I decided to implement that into football. You know, and I guess people at NFL Network and around the country and everything, they were like, whoa, we've never heard this and he's loose. There, there have been times that I've tried to drop another horse racing ism into calls. Um, Randy Moss has left the Detroit Lions defense in the wake of a keen turn of speed. But after I tried to do keen turn of speed a couple of times and I stumbled, I just, it got left on the cutting room floor. I like it a lot. It just takes too long to get it out. You know, that, that's kind of a key part of this, um, is, is that I, I'm not afraid to try new things. I write down new adjectives pretty much every single game. I try to implement them every single game. Some work, some don't. Uh, fortunately, I work with people who are very honest with me. And if there are things they really like, they tell me to do it more. If there are things they don't like, they say, hey, you might want to consider, you know, not uh, trying to spit out in 15 yards. So-and-so has been left in the wake of a keen turn of speed. The, the best bus story, though, from 2009, and I'll, I'll never forget this one, was when, uh, when we were driving to Lambeau from the hotel. We were staying in Appleton, so that was what half hour, forty minute drive from from Appleton to, to Green or uh, to Lambeau into Green Bay, and and there was of course you know everybody honking, a million Green Bay fans uh, as as you can imagine driving on their way to the stadium, and there was some there was a bus uh, like a like a old kind of transformed school bus into a basically a Packers tailgating bus. And we're, you know, you could tell it was obviously, you know, green and in and, and Packers colors. And we're pulling up on it, and on the, on the side of the bus, they had a, they had a sign that said, uh, "We'll, we'll never, we'll never forget you, Brent, number four. And it was, I mean, we, Brent was sitting right next to us on the bus, and we, <laughs> we just start rolling, laughing, like, it was just like one of the most spot on, best, you know, like just. Drop the mic, walk out thing. We'll never forget you, Brent. And that was that was hilarious. That was funny. So that was the that was the best bus story. Yeah. Let me preface this by saying I love Coach Childers. He's one of my favorite coaches of all times. But his pregame speeches were something to that like you never knew what to expect. So, you know, <laughs> we're getting ready to play the Green Bay Packers. I'll never forget. And the night before, he passes out these boxes, to everybody. All right, we all open her up, and it's an acorn. 
right? So he starts going on and on and on about, you know, what an acorn represents and all these different facts about acorns. And the bottom line is, that's what he told us. He looked dead in our eyes and said, one out of every 10,000 acorn becomes an oak tree. So you know what this represents? And in my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, failure. We got, we got 30 people, we got 53 people in the team. What do you mean one in 10, I have a one in 10,000 chance of being an oak tree? He said, potential. No, potentially 9,999 aren't gonna be acorn, we're gonna be rotting acorns. One person gets to be a freaking oak tree, like this is supposed to pump me up for a degree bait battery game. I remember looking at this acorn being the most depressed human being on the face of the earth, thinking like, you basically just told me I have zero chance of being an oak tree. You know, I'm like, what is all this 10,001 talk? You know, I thought I had a chance. Uh, yeah, so we do that. Everybody's really confused and really baffled, but in some weird way, like drew us together because we made fun of children the entire day for that, you know. But like, hey, everybody got your acorn? You know, one in 10,000 champs, bro. It'd be awesome. Like if I had those odds, I'd never would've even started playing football. It was terrible. <laughs>